you can see the heading is absolute value equations and inequalities. Now, in theory, this is something you already know how to do, but what we're going to do, and you can see it by the very first word under the heading, what we are going to do is thinking about this visually. Now, you already know how to approach many kinds of problems like this, totally with algebra, purely with algebra. In fact, if you got given this question here, it would be completely fine to not even touch a graph and just to think about that in pure algebraic terms. That would not be a problem. But what happens is, or what starts to happen, is that you start to encounter problems where it becomes a major hamper in your ability to solve the problem if you cannot think about it visually. Okay, so we're going to start off with ones that you can, and then we're going to move into areas where it's like, oh, there's a clear advantage here to solving it in a visual way and not cracking the algebra out at all. Okay, so where we're going to begin with graphing this guy. I'm going to put it onto the axes. We'll use it to solve this equation. Then we're also going to use it to solve a very closely related inequality. But we'll get to that in a minute. Now, when you are first thinking about graphing y equals absolute value of x minus 2, there's kind of there's lots of different ways you can think about it. Um, I'm going to show you first what we do if we think about this guy inside without the absolute values. If I just ask you to graph y equals x minus 2, no absolute values, right? We should be able to be at the point where it's a straight line. I should know what that looks like, right? Y equals x would be just gone right through the origin. So x minus 2, which way is it going to go? I, you might normally think of that as, oh, it's, um, it's a bit lower, right? And it's going to go negative 2 and positive 2, OK? But of course, this is not the real graph that we want. We want the absolute value of that. And back when we first met absolute value, you knew one of the definitions was, uh, well, if it's positive, just just take the positive part. But if it's negative, what do you do? You have to make it like, you have to put brackets minus x. Yeah, you like put brackets around that thing if it's negative and slap a minus sign out the front. In other words, visually, yeah, we're going to turn it upside down. Okay? So you're going to get this guy, like so. Okay? So this is that bouncy part. What's that shape called where it changes? That, that spot? What's that called? It's got a name. It's the cusp, right? So you're like, ah, oh, this is what sort of gives it that bouncy kind of quality, which is what, when I learned absolute value the first time, I was like, oh, these are the bouncy graphs, right? So you can do it that way. That's fine. Another way you can think about it is this, think back to when we were doing hyperbolas and parabolas and circles. This guy here is a translation of this. You know what this looks like, don't you? Right? That's, it's the bouncy graph and it's right there at the origin. That's where the cusp is. So what does this, this minus 2, what does it do to this? Which way does it translate? Yeah, it's going to shift sideways. It's going to go two units to the right. Like if you had x squared and then you're like, how about x minus 2 all squared, right? It moves over. Yeah. So I'm going to do the same thing. You can see I've moved over to the right. So there's the absolute value of x, but I've shifted over. So let's do this. You can see I've drawn my graph, my uh, set of axes comically large. Um, but that's because the bigger this thing is, the easier it is to work with. OK? So there we go. There's y equals the absolute value of x minus 2. I usually label um, the equation of my graph, right? And I could just say this is the absolute value of x minus 2. But I'm actually going to go a step further than that. Each of these different branches actually has a different equation, right? Uh, this guy over here is just the regular x minus 2. But what did we do to the other side? You know how we were like, ooh, this part bounces up. What did we do to it? Yeah, it's the minus of that, right? So you could either write this as minus x plus 2, or you could write it as 2 minus x. Same deal, right? Uh, and you can see off of that, you've got this guy has an intercept here. Uh, this guy has an intercept here. So there's the graph. Okay? We've done the first part, graph da da da. And now we're into the second part. Now, there's a really, really, excuse me, crucially important word right in the middle of this sentence in this problem. And we've um, mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again because students often get it. Um, actually, in many ways, every word is important. But the one I particularly want to draw your attention to is this guy here. Okay. okay, so what, is, what does hence mean? It's a re this is a really big deal. Okay? Hence means you did a thing, and now on the basis of what you just did, you must use that to then subsequently do whatever I'm asking you to do. Okay? If you don't use this thing to do this second thing, you're actually not answering the second question. right? So remember how I said to you, oh, you could, if you wanted to, solve this algebraically, if that's what you got given. But you've been asked to. Do this first and hence. So you've got to use the graph to come up with your solution, right? So if I saw a student graph this, 
right? And then they left the graph alone and then they started doing some algebra, okay? Basically, they've surrendered their marks for the second part of the question, right? Because they haven't hence solved, okay? Um, we might have done this as a part A and a part B. You'd surrender your marks for part B because you have ignored the way that the question has asked you to solve it, okay? Um, we're trying to get at a, we're trying to assess a particular skill. So how do I use this, or this rather, to solve this? Now what this thing is asking, and I'm actually going to ask you to write this to me because it's such an important sort of idea to have in your head. What this means is, when does this graph intersect with this value? Okay? When does this graph, the equals means intersect, when are these two things equal to the same thing? And it's like, when does this graph intersect this value? Okay, uh, five is just the number, and where is it going to fit on here? Well, I can compare y equals the absolute value of x minus two, that's the graph already drawn, and I can compare it with the graph y equals five. What kind of line is y equals five? It's, yeah, you can do it with your hand, yeah, okay, it's, it's horizontal, right? The way you know it's horizontal and not vertical is if the y value is always 5. Let's find a place on this graph where the y value is 5, right? Uh, well, that's 2. So if I went, what does my scale look like? 3, 4, 5. See that point right there? That has a y value of 5. But it's not the only one with a y value of 5, right? Uh, here's another spot, like here. That, the coordinate to that might be 1, 5, right? Move this around for you. There you go. Is that better? You reach. So I've got another co po uh, you know, point and its coordinates, the y value is 5. I could keep on going, right? Like this would be 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5. All the y values are 5. So this you can see is going across. It's not a vertical line. So let's go ahead and we can draw this. Okay. So what you're looking at here is these two graphs, and they do intersect at these two, one, two particular points. So these guys here, these points of intersection, that's what I'm trying to find. When you read this equation, the absolute value of x minus 2 equals 5. What you're thinking is, when does this guy here, the absolute value of x minus 2, when does it equal 5? If you can find those two values, then you're done. Okay? Are we looking for the y value or the x value? Like my solution, will it be an x equals something or a y equals something? It'll be an x equals something. And one of the ways you can know that is, have a look at the question that they've asked. It says solve this guy, right? See how it's, there's, there's no y's in here. I'm using this graph to help me. But it's all about trying to solve for x, right? The other thing is, all of the y's here, they're all 5. That's not the solution you're looking for. That's what you graphed on there, OK? So you can find when this thing is equal to 5, and you can find where this thing is equal to 5. You can actually read this off the graph if you've done it, if you've used your ruler, if you've got a nice decent scale on here, and you can confirm this algebraically. So over here, right, what does that look like it's going to be for you? It looks like 7, right, because you've got a gradient of 1 on this line, right? You're going all the way up to 5, so every time you go up 1, you go across 1, up 1, across 1, you go do that 5 times, you're going to get to 7, right? What about over on this side? Negative 3. Sorry, what were you going to say? Yeah, so what I've done right now is I've used the graph. You can see how I said, oh, there's x equals negative 3. There's x equals 7. But if I wanted to, just for my own sake, now that I have done what the question is asked, I can check myself. I can use the algebra. I can say, OK, when is x minus 2 equal to 5? Well, it's not that hard to add 2 to both sides. And you get 7. Checks out. When is 2 minus x equal to 5? It's take away. And then I'm going to multiply by negative 1. You're like, cool. It makes sense. I can, v I can check that for myself. But the graph is actually my means of solving it. Okay, are you with me so far? Why did you get so I'll, I'll Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Please Why ask. Is two minus x? Why is it on that side? Oh, you mean this guy? Yeah. That's a great question. Where did this come from? Because when you do absolute value, right, the positive part just stays what it was before. If x minus 2 is positive, then the absolute value of x minus 2 is just x minus 2. But if it's negative, you see I've got this like reflection. That's why I drew this part over here. See how this is not the part I want. I actually want the negative version of that, which is why it sort of flips up, right? So I could have written it as this. It's equal to negative 
x minus 2. But I just didn't want to write it with two negative signs. So that's why I sort of expanded it and I got that. Does that make sense? Good question.